Surrounds the witch like I'll give you all one guess as to what this session's title is going to be. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Absolutely. Okay. Got my notes up. I'll try to not just read it verbatim. I wrote, I wrote something that gave Ted a, a bit of a laugh last week, so that was good. <laughs> Did you happen to share that, Ted? No, they're your notes. I'm not going to... Yeah. I don't mind. Um, <laughs> Just like... During, when I was taking notes during last session, which I... Which don't I always like try to do it and like set my mind to it, but I never get very far. I always just get wrapped up playing the game and not take notes. And then that's why I re-listen and I go and I take out my notes. But one of like the four lines I typed out during the session last week. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I can't actually, so. Oh, <laughs> you asshole. Come on. I can't. I'm laughing too hard to read it. You need some assistance. Yeah, go <laughs> And I quote. Fucking Chamberlain ass bitch is at Cross Hollows Middle School again. <laughs> it has not been Cross Hollows Middle School. And so when we were at that school, it was not called Cross Hollows. Yeah. <laughs> No, I ca I'm putting on my brain. I'm screwing on my head. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Craig, voice command. Erase past five minutes. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. After the eight years of the half session, the session zero, if you will, um, we're all there. Uh, Banner, beloved by Flane, is waiting as the Witch Light Carnival arrives. Um, over at the Hemlock household. I don't remember your last name. I'm so sorry. It's fine. Um, uh, I don't know. They're getting up to dubious rich people shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, they're making progress on their family's project. Um, there's a lot of arcane mysteries afoot and Hemlock is working so hard, bless his heart, but he gets fucking pranked by Chamberlain and then gets kicked out of the house again. <laughs> Go I'm to the carnival. Off to the carnival. Um Arlen's chatting with everyone's favorite senior citizen, Nicholas Midnight. Um, he has a very, very, very English wisp friend. What does that mean? Okay. <laughs> um, he, he, get, he gets the day off. Arlen gets the day off. Arlen meets up with Banner. They chat. They play some chess. Arlen gets his ass kicked. Court gets chewed out by Mr. Witch, also is forcefully having to take the day off before the show, and he's got to snort some pixie dust before he goes to the show or else he gets no show, so darn it. Um, okay, just to clarify, you don't have to snort it, you just sprinkle it on yourself. If yeah, you choose but, to snort okay, it, that's on if you. You're a, if you're a fucking prude. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if you choose to snort it, that is viable, that's on you, you just don't have to. I... Please continue, I apologize for interrupting. It was a goof and a, and a laugh, a goof and a joke. It was. I would never do such a thing. For, for, for anybody <laughs> listening on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> if we have an audience. Get out of here. <laughs> what are you hey. doing? I'm sorry. Please come back. Okay. Yeah, if we've Put got an down. audience, please examine your life choices. <laughs> I, if you, if hey, we've hey, got an we're audience, awesome. <laughs> if we've got an audience, I want to study you under a microscope. <laughs> I want to put you in an enclosure and make if you run we, around like a rat. I want to record the test audience. <laughs> If we have an audience, we are under the microscope, my darling. Uh, <laughs> an audience. That's an excellent point. Tell me what you think of Stover's Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> Respond in the comments below. <laughs> I can't wait till this episode gets published so I can activate all my ghost accounts and comment about cheese whales. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm gonna make some burners and argue with myself in the comments. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's start of the carnival. Sycamore seeds and dandelions are dispersed.
first did not keep track of who got the, those things and who didn't. Um, I wrote <laughs> Banner. Banner does some smoking. Um, uh, everyone's like chilling. They get reacquainted. They go see Feathering and take the gondola ride while they get to get, you know, they catch up. Good old days. Singular day. Good old singular day eight years ago. What's up? Um, uh, the conversation turns to, you know, the the more macabre interests of Arlind and Hemlock, and they're bonding over that, but Feathering is, you know, upset and throws some people over, uh, throws Banner and Hemlock into the water for some reason, because she's too upset, because she's taken out her baggage of Mr. Hurley bugbear leaving the carnival out on the guest. So that's fun. Um, the morale's just really bad at the carnival. After the, the, you know, taking a swim on the gondola ride, we all went, we went and, you know, perused, saw some weird fun, fun foods. We went by the Hall of Mir Hall of Illusions, and we saw a proposal being fucking ruined by, you know, Miss Tasha herself, or, you know, figure of her. Um, um, and then we went to kind of patch the affair, and we saw the fucking Mindstrudel ghost girl in the mirror behind Miss Halfling Lady. Forgive me, I did not write down your name, ma'am. Um, and we're like, what the fuck is that? And then um, we reunite them. Arlen plays a cute little prank where he toshes them again. This is... I really hope we don't have an audience. This doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, You're doing great. Okay. Um... Uh, she, 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 she tells us what the ghost said to her, that the ghost asked her if she had any regrets and that she, and off, and, you know, tried to take her away, but she was like, but the ghost was in a mirror, so, oh, sorry, it's not a ghost, but it is a ghost, so, like, shush. Um, and we're, and we're like, ooh, what could that mean? Um, uh, an oddly silent candle foot shows up and we're like, what's going on, bud? And after a lot of unnecessary pantomiming, we find out that he too had a failed proposal today, and a sneaky crow man stole his voice while he was trying to propose to the Palasha, the local performing mermaid. We go to Palasha to see if we can get anything from her about that after, uh, you know, another little glance into the, the Hall of Illusions. And then, but when we go there to her performance, there's a heckler, um... And we chase down the heckler, and surprise, it's a Kenku. We catch him, and then we ask him his opinions on Stouffer's goldfish whales. <laughs> that was very long-winded and incoherent. I'm very sorry. No, um, it, was... it was fucking great, and I'm okay. actually taking notes on your recap because it's <laughs> r reminding me what the hell happened last episode. Okay. Well, <laughs> glad to be of help. I'm curtsying. So, during your chase after this uh, mysterious dwarf who turned out not to be a dwarf, shocker, surprising everyone because I totally didn't say the wrong thing repeatedly. <laughs> Everybody, there was a big gasp of surprise. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> you all get inspiration. <laughs> uh, Adam did a gasp. Adam did a good one. <laughs> Uh, during the chase there was a, a food cart that was knocked over it's elven operator sort of tossed to the ground there is a little bit of a, of a commotion um, and as you all have caught this, uh, this individual who does, who does drop their illusion um, after uh, Banner your hand sort of sink through what should have been a beard and should have been shoulders and, and stuff straight to the narrow, far narrower uh, shoulders of this Kenku bird. 
favorite creature could be an Aarakocra. Um, it's not an Aarakocra. <laughs> I know that's surprising. <laughs> um, a crowd has started to form around you as you did chase this individual for um, f from the gon from the Silver Song Lake, where the Gondola Swan's uh, jetty is, uh, past the Big Top, about halfway to the Hall of Illusions. Um, as you uh, uh, are standing there, and uh, the the rest of you are catching up to where Banner is, um, several witchlight hands, um, a, a a pair of elves, and uh, a strangely shimmering, floating ball of light uh, all begin to sort of push their way through the the crowd of of carnival goers, and and look down at you and the um Lero. I'm not going to keep calling him the ball of light since this is someone uh, that you know Arlen Lero uh just sort of flutters back and forth if I can get the accent correct again it, he certainly will <laughs> uh I don't even remember what I sounded like. Just make it up. Just do a totally yeah, different fine. one. <laughs> uh, Arlen, Arlen, what what is going on here? What's what's the problem? What's why have you apprehended this ruffian? What's what are you doing? You're supposed to be off today. Oh, well, I mean, you know, this was more for fun. You know, just a nice little chase sequence uh, to take <laughs> the, the steam off. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, there was on, just something funky cost about him. Paying he customer. Was, uh, with good cause, with good cause, he was heckling the show and was like pretending to be a bunch of different people heckling the show and is not even, he's still pretending to be someone else now. Like, Marlon did not forget about uh, Candlefoot's voice. Oh, yeah, and Candlefoot is mute now for something or other. And this guy might know something about it, maybe. I don't know. This this guy's responsible. Also, we don't even know if he has a ticket. Well, I mean, he, he's got the wings. Oh. The, the, the wings. Anybody who's paying customer gets the, the, the wings, so he's probably, you know, paying customer. Uh, but if he's heckling the show, then perhaps we should let the hands take him then? What do you think I'm doing? Got to get him first. But shouldn't well okay. Uh and the, the two elves uh wander over and, and grab this individual uh under each arm. The um the, the illusion does fully drop and everybody can see um a a small corvid looking figure in robes with a pair of um a pair of butterfly wings strapped to his back <laughs> that should have popped up yes. I can never tell okay perfect as so, uh, the yep uh, okay so I mean y'all are gonna take him like to do we have a brig <laughs> we don't have a brig right no, 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 no. We, we'll we'll take his wings and we'll... Oh. Okay, poor choice. <laughs> we'll, we'll revoke his ticket mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we will throw him out of the carnival. Uh, yeah. Banner, yeah. as you are still standing there, this mm -hmm. uh, individual, this Kenku, looks at you uh, somewhat pleadingly uh, and, and, and in a sort of odd voice for for this bird well that uh, that might be a real bad idea i just you got to help me out here banner you got to you got to give me just a little more time well uh so banner is 
Banner's not letting go of uh, the Kenku uh, kettle stream, even if the elves are trying to sort of pry him loose. Um, what do you say? And, what do you say? This fella, you know, just sometimes they do that to have a good time. Like, how about we take custody of him and we'll keep it, you know, on the down low, you know, no big chase scenes or anything. And, you know, we'll we'll handle, you know, making sure there's not a fuss. Yes, we have. Uh, uh, Candlefoot believes that uh, this individual has stolen his voice and you want to throw him out of the carnival without uh, so much as ascertaining whether or not that is true. What if it is true? You will leave uh, Candlefoot with no voice at all. If a ball of light could shrug this, th that that is the sort of sentiment that rolls <laughs> off his voice as, uh, as well, well, no, you you do raise a valid point. Ken Candlefoot was acting very oddly this morning, perhaps. Uh, well, I mean, you are a hand, uh, Arlen. Uh, even if you're supposed to be on your day off, I, I suppose it can't hurt to... Well, I'll, I'll accompany you. Uh, Very well. Uh, Arlen holds up, like, three fingers on his paw. Uh, hands on her. Uh, I swear on my good foot. Uh, we'll make sure that nothing, you know, disrupts the carnival. Uh, is, is there, like, a crowd gathered at all of, like, carnival oh, yeah. goers? Oh, yeah. Uh, you all are surrounded. They had to push their way through to you all. Uh, he'll make, like, a gesture for them to, like, leave off, and then he'll, like, uh, use minor illusion to conjure, like, a little, like, ghost choir, and just, all right, show's over, do 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 and just kind of, like, back <laughs> off and try to disperse the crowd a little bit. Didn't make a performance check. <laughs> there is... <laughs> The, the crowd clearly thinking that this, okay, this must have been some sort of weird performance piece or something. Like, they they, they risk their own shit. This is amazing. And you can hear the, the crowd murmuring, and they, they do split, and as you all stand up, uh, it's slow at first, but as, as like, it keeps going, the, the, the applause deepens and deepens, and the two hands who are with you uh, step away from from uh from kettle steam and just give each other a little perplexed look but um the the crowd does disperse and starts going back to the various events uh around you uh, and uh Leroux does stay with you as he said uh so what 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 do do are you, do we take him to Candlefoot should we what do you think is the plan here? Some hands on duty. We mm. probably should bring him to Candlefoot and figure out if he... Well, be sure that this is the one, although I doubt very much that it might not be. Uh, and uh, perhaps Candlefoot might know more? Now that we can communicate with him, anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh. Well, if uh, if you're talking about the the sort of monochromatic gentleman, uh, I may I may have borrowed something from him. And he reaches uh, very slowly into his robes, and he produces um, a. A, a small, uh, it's, it's like a, uh, a, 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 I don't want to say voodoo doll. He produces a, a very small looking totem doll that is made out of uh, a corn cob with, that has been, uh, that has been painted into uh, black and white checker. Uh, and it has been, um, it's, it's little, there's a piece of, of, um, come on brain. Thorn, like rose branch thorn wrapped around its neck. And he says, um, I, I apologize for inconvenience in you, but there's some weird stuff going on and no one would listen to me, so I had to 
borrow. I had to borrow uh, that that poor man's voice. Uh, I, I'm going to cast detect magic again and uh, examine it. Uh, sure enough, there is some. Um, what would that be? Probably. It is magical, and it is some sort of um, say evocation type magic. It is it is literally stealing the the sounds from Candlefoot's throat and and bringing them out through here. Uh, would there be? Um, well, in that uh, in that case, um, um, would I would I know that there's a way that it can be dispelled without dispel magic by chance? Uh, simple answer, destroy the doll. Okay. Destroying the doll would break the spell. Um, I'm going to say, well, if you are looking for someone to assist you and speak with you, I certainly can help you there, but you should return this man's voice. Well, we should, uh, we should really get some, you know, the, so that some of the security hands involved in this, I don't want to get in trouble for mishandling any of this. Who said anything about mishandling? You know, it's all good. Me. It's I did. Out. Just now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, fair point. Fair point. Um, I want to flag down anyone if I can. Quick uh, question for you, uh, Mr. Guy with a Beak. Um, actually, quick question before that quick question. What's your name, pal? Kettle steam. Yep. Kettle steam. All right, kettle. Mm -hmm. Um, huh, like, you know, uh, why were you giving the uh, woman that was doing a little performance such a hard time? You want to explain that? What was your point there? You seem like a, you know, kind. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know you that well, but you know, reasonable yeah. guy. Well, to, uh, to answer real simply, um, I've been trying to get an audience with Witch and Light. There's there's something going on with the, with the Fey that's supposed to run this place, and they haven't been forthright giving me any answers. They've been shrugging me off, so I've been trying to. Sabotage the carnival. Yeah, make sure I can get their attention if I could. Court, you are able to flag down uh, a hand that you know, a t fairly tall uh, knoll from the world of Eberron uh, named Lyril. She is one of, one of the uh, sort of larger and a little more aggressive security hands here at the Witchlight Carnival, but seem, seems to enjoy the jokes that you tell, so... Mm -hmm. So we're a little bit besties. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me what you need. Tell me what you need. Uh, just wondering if you could get, you know, Nikki to come on over to or you know one of the higher ups in security but if Nikki's free that'd be great last I saw he's in the ticket booth I'll go talk to him do you want me to bring him here or are you gonna yeah yeah okay thank you're the best doll she, she immediately you. turns and just not really like forces her way through the crowd, but she, she's like not really gentle moving through the crowds getting and heads off towards the ticket booth. And Kettle Steam looks up at you, looks up at you all. Uh, he is probably about three ish feet, so mar marginally, I think just about Arlen's height, uh, but looking up at all of the rest of you, especially Banner. Um, look, there's 
there's something real weird going on here. I, I can I can prove it. Uh, last time I was here before before they found me and threw me out, I heard we should probably do this somewhere else, but I heard Witch and Light talking and and it's uh it's not good and i think it has something to do with with uh with my patron so uh well and for the next part their voice changes between sentences uh it initially switches to the somewhat high pitched timber you're useful from or not useful that you're used to uh from Mr. Light, and there's a certain panicked edge. So someone's going to find out about this. They're going to shut us all down. Calm yourself. Calm yourself. We all agreed to this pact. Our hands were a little forced, but our eyes were open. We let the coven take what it wants, and in return, we stay in business. We want to stay in business, don't we, Mr. Light? The second voice is, of course, Mr. Witch. And Kettle Steam, once they have finished that, look up at you all and just hands up like something's weird. Uh, well, so you so you tried to get thrown out of the carnival by heckling someone? That was your solution? I'm not buying it, buddy. I'm trying to make it... I'm, I'm not trying to... I figure if I keep causing trouble... They'll... They'll actually talk to me. They'll... They'll... They'll come and talk to me. I'm... I'm a paying customer, so... Unless I'm... You know, physically hurting someone, they can't throw me... Well, I guess they can throw me out. They were just about to, but... Well, that, that might have been because I ran into the cart with the food. Doesn't matter. Point is... I've been trying to get their attention. They won't They won't come and talk to me. So... I figured if I caused trouble, they'd have to take the time to, to address my concerns. Uh, Court is going to kind of... Good. Court is just... While while the Kenku is speaking, just kind of side eye everyone and give kind of a, I'm just an entertainer kind of shrug. Whoa. Give you the I'm a guest here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably I probably shouldn't get into a lot of this, but I'm I'm honestly getting kind of desperate. Uh, see, not. A couple years ago, I, I made a pact. Oh, whoa, whoa, a... I'm, I'm going to stop you right there, bud. A couple years ago, nothing. Wait till Nick gets here. I mean, okay. So, uh, but we we're not going to... We have a little time uh, to wait before Nick arrives. Yeah, but not in front of the guests. Come on. <laughs> Maybe we go somewhere where the guests aren't, and then I can just. If Fine. Nick gets here, good chance he throws us. He throws me out, and then I, I lose my chance to find out what's going on. Fine, 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 fine. Just behind the tent. Behind the tent. Go on. You know, all, Banner, a game that you should really check out whenever we get a little bit of free time. Mm -hmm. You would probably do a very, very good job. At playing the uh 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 oh shoot what is the title outstare the cyclops yeah that's it uh oh, well I very much look forward to it hopefully we will uh, wrap this business up soon and I will uh, be able to engage in uh, how you say staring contest yeah I just it crossed my mind I thought you know I should say something <laughs> well, wait what's happening. It. It sounds like fun. Go, go. You all I will head off. drag kettle steam behind a tent. Out of the walkways. Come on. Uh, you you go off behind us, uh, the small set of tents that are between the big top uh, and the, the Hall of Illusions. Um, 
and Kettle Steam does not put up any fight at all. Um, and as you're walking, look, I just, I'm, I'm, I, I cannot begin to describe how much I need answers. I, you, you've all heard of, I'm sure, people who make packs with, with, with powerful creatures. Well, I made a pact with a fae, a, 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 a tall, beautiful, just... Yeah. Point is, I can't get in con... There's no... The connection is gone. And, and she rules a place... She, she rules a place called Prismere. Well, this carnival is supposed to have some kind of connection, but, well, Witch and Light, they don't, they don't seem to really get it. Or if they do, they won't tell me. And so I need to know what they know. And it's... So your girlfriend changed her number, so you're like tracking her down by like trashing her friend's carnival she's not she's a patron she gives me I don't know the difference you know the difference Arlen oh god we're having this conversation there's there's, (laughs) there's a significant difference well I don't know it Uh, usually between a partnership there is a nearly equal exchange of power or people are seen as peers in this instance there absolutely is not there is something very powerful that is offering a tiny bit of something they are capable of for the exchange of servitude not exactly the same he's just staring at you like you don't have a head (sighs) I yes okay Anyway, (laughs) (laughs) so uh, you believe that the witch and light should be more aware, more cognizant of uh, this connection to Prismi and uh, uh, not running the carnival appropriately? It's It sounds like somebody's got some leverage on them. Whoever this hourglass group is. If, if, the the coven that you heard them discuss? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, I'm wondering if th- there's got to be some connection. Right? I mean... It doesn't have to be, but there might be. It is not... It's not entirely worth discounting. Well, I mean, they... This place, this carnival, is supposed to be tied to Prismere, and that's where... That's where Zabilna, my, my, my patron, rules. And I'm... I'm not allowed into Prismere. That's, I'm her agent here on the material plane here in Faerun. I actually came from kind of far away when I heard the witch light was setting up here this time, but they they don't seem to have that understanding. And so I need to I need to know what they know about Sibilna, because if this carnival is tied to Prismere and that's her realm, then they should know. They should be tied to her, same as me. But they're not. Mm. And you know that uh, Zabilna, you said? Yes? Um, I mean... I've never met her in person, just apparitions, dreams, tall elf, long white hair, mark on her face. And you know that she is gone and you have not simply lost favor. Mm-hmm. 
I've gotten in trouble before, I admit, with Zabilna, made a few bad decisions, but it's not like this. Besides, you, you make a you make a Fey angry, you don't just get a you don't just get the cold shoulder, you know. Uh, I I look at Court and Arlen and say, if it is possible to speak with Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, and this is something that should be brought to their attention, if nothing else, so that we may understand better. Mm -hmm. Without any leverage, they're going to give you the same runaround I'm going to get. That's, that's why I was causing trouble, hoping... Hoping it would that they would talk to me just to make me go away. I, I don't want to cause trouble. That 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 singing was genuinely beautiful. Wish. Well, I mean, I do love a good mystery. Uh... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Court uh, kind of nervously, you know. Rubs back of his neck and shrugs. I'm already on. I'm. Uh, you, you know. I'm already on. Kind of thin ice with the, the big cheese. Um. I don't know if Nikki gets here. He, he can. Mm hmm. Best bets with him. I think. Well, I mean, I don't. I don't have any like leverage with the bosses hell I've never really even talked to any of them I don't know about any of this don't 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 look at me you know I I don't really know about any of all this I mean if, I'm, if I can make a suggestion there's um you like your gunna no matter what I say. Yeah, that's fair. That's that's fair. Uh, tell you what, this this will be the last of it, and I'll 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 destroy this thing. Your friend will get his voice back, and then we can. Well, now we you can decide what you're gonna do, but uh, <clears throat> well, easiest way I can think of to get leverage on either one of them. Which has a pocket watch. I'm, I don't know if you've seen it, little thing, but Very without familiar, it, yep. Well, then you know that without it, this place doesn't run on schedule. And if this place doesn't run on schedule, they get antsy. They get in trouble. Chance of getting in trouble with who's ever supposed to be running the behind the scenes, which it's supposed to be Zabilna, but. Mm -mm. You can get your hands on that. Mm -mm. That'll nope. give you the nope. leverage. Nope, Just... nope, nope. Absolutely not. Nope. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like this place running on schedule, you know. Uh... I am. Like I said, thin ice. Absolutely not. Not committing robbery. Not doing any crimes. None of that. Not jeopardizing my livelihood. Absolutely not. Mm -mm, nope. All right. You'll have to find some other way to get some... I mean, I... I... I don't have to do anything, bud. I don't. I'm great. I'm that. I'm. You're the one saying all sorts of stuff, doing all kinds of stuff. Maybe. The curiosity is what you're doing. Maybe, maybe, but uh, I, I get you the see, feeling. friend. I, I, I think you're going about this all wrong. You come into the carnival, you raise a ruckus, um, you cause much problem, and then uh, when we apprehend you, you say that uh, you cause problem because you believe that uh, this will get your audience with the people that uh, you need to talk to and need information from, and then you try and enlist us to cause even greater problem and to steal from these people. Yep. Uh, that is... Uh, Desperation? Yeah. 
well, yeah, that's it, maybe at. desperation, but also, uh, I believe, narrow-minded. Um, there is other ways to convince people to talk to you other than um, gaining leverage and making them so desperate that that is their only choice. Perhaps uh, we can make wit and light uh, desire to speak with us. He looks yeah. genuinely confused at that idea. Like, mm. this is not a thing that has ever occurred to him. Yes, perhaps. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do not know, but uh, with uh, Arlen and with Kurt, Kurt and perhaps, perhaps with Nikki, they can uh, put their heads together and make some suggestions that uh, we can impress and appeal, impress upon and appeal to Witch and Mr. Witch and Mr. Light that... Uh, will make them genuinely happy to have a conversation with us. And then uh, perhaps uh, we might get some of this information that you are um, so interested in. But uh, may I ask you, um, I'm curious, uh, how, how exactly do you know my name? Well, I, I have been... I have been shadowing y'all for some time, I admit. Various forms. You do understand various... that literally with every additional piece of information you give us, you make yourself less and less trustworthy. I don't mean to sound, well, you notwithstanding. The rest of you... I'll have the same, the same aura, the same magic on you. I wasn't real sure at first. I thought maybe you got it in Prismere. But talking to you, I don't imagine any of you have ever been there. No. No. No, I don't think you have, which means someone, someone from there enchanted you. And then I saw, well, that. Your girlfriend stole my foot? Oh, my God. <laughs> still, still not my girlfriend, and no. Uh, Ted, and I'm sorry this keeps to happening know. to you. <laughs> He, he once again switches to the high-pitched voice uh, of Mr. Light. Uh, Hello. Someone's going to find us. They'll shut us down. And then to Mr. To Mr. Witch, relax. Take, take it easy. We, we let the hourglass come and take what they want. And everybody stays and we stay in business. And that's what we want. Isn't it, Mr. Light? Staying in business. Take what they want. What sort of things do you think that they would want? Can't really say. Looks like they wanted a foot. I don't know rightly what they took from you. Mm. But Zabilna, she doesn't take from people. She's, well, some people here know her as a, and here in Faerun, I mean, she's more of a, what's that? Like a fairy godmother type. Helps people out of their problems. Certainly not stealing feet. Edge. Tall? What? What? You said she's tall? Yeah. yeah. Real tall. Elf, long, white hair. Mark on her face, always in. Well, not always, usually in blue. You wouldn't happen to know what any of these coven members typically look like, would you? 
I don't. Other than hearing Mr. Witch say it, I got no idea what that is. Uh, I stand up and look around to see if um, uh, that carnival hand and Nick are on their way over. Hard to tell. You all have gone off behind a bunch of tents. Yeah, yeah. I'm li like, yeah, I'm like going out to look for them. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, there is, in fact, a very confused looking goblin and a very irritated looking knoll. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hello. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, scamper up behind him and be like, hey, Nikki. Oh, what, what was. <sighs> Wait, why did you tell Lyril to come get me? And then you scamper up. I've been standing here for like five minutes trying to call your name. Hey, hey, Nikki, I didn't want to upset the guest. Come on back. I'm a, okay. What? What's the problem? I got, I got, I got Durlegron trying to sell tickets. He doesn't even have hands. I'm sure we've, he's doing great. This guy's causing a fuss. Come on. We've been told as we, as we're like walking back with him, presuming he follows. Um, uh, We've been told that there might be some individuals known as the Hourglass Coven that have an association with Mr. Light and Mr. Witch, and we need to discuss that relationship with them. I have no idea who that is. I mean, not Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Obviously, I know who they are. Yes, and that is our, why our I am what, telling our... you so that you may go find them or bring us to them. Because Nick. once they hear those names, as I understand it, they will understand the urgency by which we have to be speaking with them. Nikki, I, yeah. I think it has something to do with all the, you know, everything. <laughs> All the everything, oh. nice and specific for uh, Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know everything going on, all the weird stuff. I mean, we're in a fake carnival. Like weird stuff is bread and butter here. I mean, people disappearing. I mean, little ghost girls. I mean, people. Have you oh. ever met a rabbit without a foot? Uh, yeah. Okay, no. Admittedly, until you, you are the first. That, I mean, that, that was weird. I mean, gleam and glister. I mean, people disappearing. I mean, people saving me while I'm falling off the trapeze. You know. I what? You know, things are weird around here. You know, things have been weird for the past uh, two, three years. The <laughs> court is looking frantically at you guys to be like, how long has it been? What? Eight years since I have been here and had eight something years. taken from me and my sister. Past eight years. Eight. Look, I'll, I'll tell him what. What is it again? What? What? What name? It was the hourglass important. coven. Coven, right? Yes. 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 Uh, I'll repeat that. Tell him All it's right. important. Um, I'll see if they'll come out here, but. I mean, look, we got the big top in a couple hours. They, they're going to be busy. I'm so they will hurry. Yeah, I'm wrangling this, this hooligan over here. Come on. By the way, hooligan, you said you were going to give back the voice that you stole. Could I'm not a hooligan wrangler. Now? Come on. Court's still just yelling at Nikki back there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Just uh, we got to get over to Candle, Candlefoot. We'll give us voice back and this will be just a just a footnote in history a story to tell their kids and all that uh, all right uh, all right look I'll, I'll, I'll go talk to witch and light we'll we'll try to meet you over there i just i don't i don't think they're gonna go for it guys i'm gonna be honest but i'll try which like Not a Got it. wrangler nikki i'm doing their job for them i'm an entertainer come on yeah to take lyro She's a hooligan regular. That's literally a job. Yeah, but she was getting you. Okay, so but she does. Lyra, go with them. Just go. go with them. Go on, Nikki. Go. Uh, 
as as fast as he can, which is not very fast, given he is still walking with a cane, uh, he scampers uh, back towards the staff area. Uh, fortunately, it is not very far. Um, as he walks off, uh, I am assuming you all are headed to Candlefoot at the Hall of Illusions. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to wait? Um, I'm going to take our friend potentially on a short detour. Um, I'm looking for the... Uh, who am I looking for? I'm looking for the elf whose cart we destroyed. Oh, uh, okay. The <laughs> coming out from behind the oh, yeah, actually, uh, we will. You come out from behind the tents, and the mm -hmm. elf is standing there. His cart has been turned back up by the two half elves, or by the two elves who uh, initially tried to. Hey, Kettle Steam, and he just looks at you. Is uh, th uh, there any any permanent damage? No damage. We're going to take a quick break. Ten minutes. Oui. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Mwah! <laughs> Ollie had to go pick up Mike, but didn't want to make a fuss. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. This is like something. I okay. Thank, so thank earlier you for in this, me, yes. yeah, yeah. In, in earlier, I had messaged him and said like, "Hey, I know how it can feel uncomfortable to like ask for help when you need it, but let me know." If Thank you. 
Banner, as you lead, um, kettle steam, the the Kenku out into sort of the main path, uh, back where you crashed through a, um, through through a food wagon. The uh, the mood of the carnival seems pretty upbeat. The crowd seems to all be having a good time. You can hear the sounds of children playing games and laughing and um, the music that is, there's no, obviously no speaker system, but um, not far from where you're standing, you can see a, uh, a wagon that is, or yeah, a wagon that is uh, devoted entirely to a single giant uh, organ. Wow, brain, come on. Um, and it's it is playing just the the most upbeat of of uh, pipe music. Uh, there is a um a monkey with a long cloak turning a, the this handle at the rear of this wagon. You know, piping carnival music. Um, the 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 food vendor looks at you kind of takes a second to scowl over at um over at kettle steam just waves waves a hand this uh my friend here wanted to stop by and apologize and i'll squeeze kettle steam's neck oh uh yeah yeah i'm uh I'm real sorry. Can can we can we go now? Like, God. No. I'm very very sorry. I crashed into your wagon. Ah uh, yeah, see that is much better. And I'll give him one of my cigarettes. <laughs> Start. I mean, I I don't have lips. I I am. <laughs> <laughs> unable to participate in this particular endeavor. I will lean down and get in his face and say, really, you think lips will, not having lips will stop you? <laughs> yes. Hmm. Well, yeah, um, don't I'll have nearly... better not go smoking and messing up uh, our friend's voice. Yeah, Wait, what... that probably doesn't work that way. No, what, I, I, what he said. I don't think I don't think he works. So we gonna we gonna go give this guy back his voice. I mean, I'm, yes, I'm happy uh, to wait here for Witch and Light and and no, and let's see if uh, I... return Candlefoot his voice, and you can apologize to him, and then we will see if Witch and Light are ready to speak with us. Good, good, good luck with that. I, I don't imagine they're going to do that, but uh, you know, I could be wrong. I mean, I didn't even think about going the other way, so what do I know? Other than... And it just sort of trails off <laughs> as you uh, make your way through the crowds, uh, past some of the other attractions, to back to the Hall of Illusions, the same 
tall mahogany cabinet with the the mannequin of uh the wizard tasha there's a small line uh on the wooden platform that leads to the doors to the hall of illusions but when he sees you all candlefoot just jumps out from behind his podium and practically flies off the the platform and onto the ground just staring absolutely furiously at uh kettle steam and he's whatever he is trying to shout at him there is no sound but he is <laughs> clearly forgotten that he has no voice because he is just animatedly pointing at him and shaking a fist and his mouth is going, but there is zero sound. Whoa, whoa. Come on, bud. Come on, come, come on down. It'll be all right. We got yeah, him. Wait for, the, wait for that to pass before lifting up the, producing the doll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it goes on for a, a, a surprising amount of time. He gets into like, <laughs> When Kettlesteam get, gets up, uh, Candlefoot does, like, poke him hard in the chest, and he's gesturing past the Hall of Illusions, and and um, he, he, like, holds up a hand, and he's, he's not poke, he's like, got, like, his, his ring finger between making a gesture of, like, you, you fucked this up for me, um, and then just takes him a few seconds, takes a deep breath. And then just stares at you all because he can't say anything. I <laughs> then break the doll in half. <laughs> there is actually a... no. I try very hard, and then I hand it to Banner. <laughs> yeah, just crush the doll. There is a spray of blue and green sparks of magical energy as. Uh, the corn cob that makes up the center of this weird candlefoot doll uh, is crushed in your hand. And with a sound like a low, somewhere between a howl and like a moan, uh, the, the energy wraps itself around candlefoot's neck and he takes a couple steps back. He takes a couple steps back. Oh, oh, well, that's that's a lot better. <laughs> oh, thank God. I don't sound like my like I did when you were using the when I was talking in your head. That was ooh, that was a rough couple of years. <laughs> oh man i am so glad that that's for wait i've i've got to go i've got to go find palasha i've got to hey. go find Pal what uh before you go i mean can you tell us anything else what about about what no i gotta i i was trying to propose wait. good luck yeah, yeah, is she, is she still over in the lake? She's performing right now, right? I could go. I gotta go. And he pushes past you all, leaving the line at the Hall of Illusions uh, somewhat perplexed as several of them just look around, open the door, walk right in. <laughs> uh, Banner's gonna Ooh, really walk punished. up uh to the Hall of Illusions, walk up to the front of the line, and and it, he's not following anybody in, but anyone who hasn't gone in yet, he's going to start asking for tickets. <laughs> in fairly orderly fashion, they just, with the look of confusion, uh, start handing you tickets. Uh, you still are, are you, are you still carrying your crate on your back or oh, yeah. like the wings on it? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Right. The wings are on the front because the crate's yeah. on the back. So yep. the wings are sticking out front. 
and he doesn't really like he remembers seeing the tickets get stamped or or something but he's not really sure what to do so he's trying to poke holes in it with his finger <laughs> there, there is a a small um i mean it's basically a handle with a metal punch like a okay. little spike on the end that you just oh great poke so, through the end fantastic <laughs> Uh, um, I, uh, Panner just calls out primarily to Arlen. Uh, do you think your your friend will be back soon? Mm -hmm. Oh well, <laughs> I'm just punching tickets. <laughs> I mean, love is love. You know, he's got to do what he's got to do. He'll well, yes, back. of course. Why Why else do you think I am here uh, doing his job for him? Uh, beware of the uh, lollipop girl. Very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's joking, I'm sure. <laughs> and I'm just shaking my head. No, I'm not. Uh, if, if you see her, do not listen to her. <laughs> uh, they're joking. They're both joking. <laughs> <laughs> About three or four minutes later, Candlefoot comes running back. And he he's a little out of breath. He stops, he's got his hands on his knees, puts his head down. She wasn't she wasn't there. She wasn't at the lake. What happened? She's supposed to still be performing. Okay, I'm a little lightheaded. Oh, okay. That's right. She was being heckled. I thought. She did she get a little heckled. The lake? Yeah, it'll probably be a minute before she's back. Sorry, we forgot uh, to mention we have other things going on right now. Kettle's team just sort of whistles. <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing to do with this, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm looking frantically around like, <laughs> Nicholas, please show up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I I'm sure she's, you know, kicking it somewhere. We'll, if we see her, we'll let her know you're looking for her. Okay, but why isn't she performing? She should be, what? Because this knucklehead. What did you do? And his eyes lock in on Kettle's team. We need him still, actually, for a moment. Don't... nothing? Uh, Do he, we? I mean... Yes. We got the information from him, and, like, if he gets an audience with uh, Mr.'s Witch and Light, then he succeeded in using his deviousness to obtain, uh, like, I don't think he should get the audience, you know? What, like, he did this a energy thing. five minutes ago? I... I am admittedly entirely struck by what you have just said, considering how much effort we have put in at this point. And yeah. I'm going to hold my ground on this one. Well, all I'm saying is that we've got the information and we can have the audience and move forward. But I just don't think this guy needs to be present. But he gave us the information. Yeah, so that he could still get what he wanted because we busted his devious plan. And now we're just going to give him what he wanted. He's, well, devious is maybe a bit of a stretch. He's trying to understand what very well may be some nefarious plot of some kind. I mean, tell that to uh, insert name of performer who got heckled off the stage Washa. <laughs> if if i must then i will but right now we're doing something else <laughs> okay okay court you gotta you guys gotta pick a spot hey come i on, was waiting <laughs> behind the other tents <laughs> and i was like oh no maybe they went back out where she told me she was gonna wait the first time wait wait mm -hmm. You would prefer that I leave the ticket booth of the Hall of Illusions unattended. <laughs> Arlen, Court, can what? one of you two please explain to me why there is a guest punching tickets 
and not one of my employees. Okay, I look, it's a I long need to see a ticket, bunch. please, Nikki. I don't have a whole bunch, and I'm not supposed to be working today. Okay, you get a pass. Look, Candlefoot oh, wait, no, I, I told you had his voice today. stolen by this ruffian, this no good do batter, okay? And then the no good do batter went and heckled uh, the performing mermaid. What is the person's name? Halasha. Halasha. You got it. Oh, I'm sorry. You all said something at the same time, and I did not hear the name. Put it in chat. It is Palasha. Palasha. Heckled Palasha. She, you know, was heckled off the stage. Uh, we came back to give Candlefoot his voice back. Candlefoot, upon getting his voice, went searching for Palasha. Could not find her. Candlefoot's back now. It's all good. Okay, so you you know she's behind the Hall of Illusions, right? Like when I was looking for you all at the last place, well, the second last place you were since. Well, we obviously you did. You caught her in front of the tent. Can you hear that she's behind the Hall of Illusions. Look, I'll I'll okay. punch tickets if you don't want Banner to do it. But Carol Foot's no, got it's fine, business. Lyril. You can Lyril punch the tickets for. For for Candlefoot, I think he's I think he's got something on his mind. The the tall knoll grumbles and goes up onto the platform, stares down at the people who shrink back. Give me your ticket. <sighs> be uh, okay. be be sure to warn them about the lollipop girl. Do not do ba that. Banner relinquishes the punch. <laughs> which is swiped out of your hand. All, all right, so why don't why don't we move to the if Kendallfoot, if you're looking for Palasha, she's out back. She, I mean, she's in the river cuz you know mermaid, merfolk and Kendallfoot goes running off. Good luck, Kendallfoot. What have you got for us, Nikki? So we got a couple hours till the big top. Light, mm -hmm. it, light's gonna be running the big top, and they, I, I couldn't find which. I could only find light, and that's weird enough on its own. Those, that those two are. I mean, unless there's business stuff going. Well, I guess that's what it is. Then it's business stuff. I don't know where which was, but lights. Go ahead. I'm supposed to meet with Mr. Witch. Yeah, before the big top, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm sure he'll be there. That's that's not what I'm worried about. But I, I mean, I couldn't get Witch. I could only get Light, and Light's not coming. Light, Light is. I said that word. The the you 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 all said Hourglass Coven. I said that right, right? Mm. That is correct. I okay. Yes. Okay. See, I said that. And I've never seen that man so pale. That man walks around in white stage makeup. Like, yeah. That man somehow, <laughs> even under white stage makeup, went pale. <laughs> I'm going to ask him how he did that. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> but if I know Mr. Light, and I do, kind True. of. And he, he does the, the hand wave like, eh, kind of. <laughs> He's going to run the big top tonight. If you're there, you, you, he'll, he'll be on the side. I can, I can bring you in the back. You can come in the front. It, however you want to do it. But you got like another... And he, he looks at his wrist where there is very clearly no watch. <laughs> you got another couple hours before that's going to go on. I, I, I will try to get him out of that wagon. I will... I will I gotta run by the ticket booth. I don't... I, I haven't been there in a while, and if I'm not there, there's nobody making deals for tickets, so people are having to pay pure coin. It's it's a nightmare, it's a mess, it's, it's an accounting disaster. But that's okay. This is important. It doesn't seem important to him. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get back to work. Um. Well, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna run by the booth. Five minutes tops. Then I'm gonna go back and try to get light out of that wagon again, or or find which. I mean, two hours might be just enough time for you to uh beat out uh the old Cyclops in a staring contest. Yeah. Well, it certainly sounds like we have some time to kill, and uh, Challenger 2 sounds like a lovely way to pass the time. Let's, uh, I mean, what do you say we escort this uh, hooligan off the premises first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks at you all pleadingly, but actually says nothing. I, I didn't think that was the plan. I thought we were, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Court scratching his head. Well, there's still one more individual that uh, he must apologize to. So, perhaps he stays with us until he has the opportunity to make amends to Palasha. I think I can get behind that. I just think he should have to wait outside during the meeting. But I see no problem with that I, I I can get behind that that's kettle steam <laughs> <laughs> wonderful well it sounds like we have a plan we now just have a few hours to kill and Banner sort of looks around um, does he what, what sort of booths does he see in the immediate vicinity uh, you all are by the Hall of Illusions, well, currently behind, or in front of the Hall of Illusions. Mm -hmm. uh, any, any sign of Candlefoot yet? He has run off behind the Hall of Illusions. He is on the other side of this giant tent. Uh, he has not returned to you all yet, no. Yeah. Uh, Around you are numerous small booths with a variety of games, which I believe I have a handout for. Um, and then you all are here, so you can see the, the Pixie Kingdom, the snail racing. Mm -hmm. and um, Banner's just going to walk up to whatever the closest booth is with a game in it. Gonna stand kind of Why nervously and just wait. <laughs> everything is in the GM notes. Okay. Uh, the closest one to you is a game called the Almirage Ring Toss. Ooh. Oh, lovely. There is a, a witch light hand in the now pretty familiar uh uniform of the butterfly wings um a a a, a dragonborn with bright colored robes on shouting this all mirage is no mirage adorn its horn with two or three rings to win a prize step right up sir you look like you've got the arm to do it one punch gets you three rings very well Uh, he hands over a uh, a trio of uh, brass rings about eight to ten inches across. Uh, on the there there is a large, probably six foot square uh, table, and on of it on top of it is a the, as you see in the the art this this wooden statue of a uh, a, a rabbit like creature with a unicorn's horn teleporting around the table and I will need you to make uh, three DC 17 dexterity checks oh oh it okay. takes you a little bit to get the timing down um, it's it's not moving it's teleporting so you kind of have to predict like uh, based on the, it's sort of its pattern where and, and facing and speed where it's going to be. And the first two just 
I mean, the first one just bounces right off the table and and out of the booth, and and the dragon. Oh, I'll get I'll get that for you, and uh, runs off to get the ring. The second one, at least, lands on the tip. The third time, the rabbit has not quite appeared when you toss the ring, and bam, catches it immediately. Hmm. Oh, all right, all right. One out of three. One out of three. Not bad. Not bad. Get you. Oh, well, uh, um, he's awkwardly holding up a unicorn horn full of candy. Uh, <laughs> you can always try again if you want a better prize. It'll cost you another punch. No, this is, a, this is a wonderful prize. And I will reach out for the unicorn horn full of candy. Um, and just not to anyone in particular, Banners. This is, uh, Lovely. I have not seen a game like this for many years. I, uh, it's all about uh, pattern recognition, and uh, I'm sure that uh, if I had more time, I would uh, be able to memorize the pattern, uh, much like I did with uh, the Man of Pack uh, to avoid the ghosts. Uh, lovely game uh, and lovely memory. Thank you. And Banner's just ready to move on to the next game. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Adam. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Not gonna ask, actually. Um, it, it, it was my dumbass Pac-Man reference. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh. The man of Pac. Oh, I. Okay. The French accent completely pulled the wool over my eyes on that one. <laughs> Anyone um, else? Anyone else? Arlen? Hard, huh? Show them how it's done. You work here. You know the tricks. Sir, would you like to try your hand? Toss a ring on the Almirage. Yes, remember, wait before you throw the first one. Uh, you must uh, uh, understand the pattern that it, it, it is hoping. Uh, uh, I'm not really that good at understanding patterns. And also, like, there's a little bit of luck involved here. And uh, that's not... Why should you do that? Well, I mean, like, understand the patterns as much as you want, but this is an entropic event, you know. Uh, sure, I mean, I'll try, I guess. Well, I, I don't see why not. We apparently have a few hours before a very important conversation. Uh, and I'm going to cast Detect Magic to track the Conjuration magic. Eating will get you advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that's going to be helpful here. Oh. What? What? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, you are really good at this. <laughs> you know, I think we're just going to let that ride, and I, I will play a different game. Maybe the snail racing or <laughs> Pixie Kingdom I've always liked. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm still floored. <laughs> the, the, the... Well, last week only fours. <laughs> <laughs> the the Dragonborn running the booth just is standing there with his jaw just dropped. Like what the like the 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 first ring like uh you know the 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 ring hits the 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 horn and does the spin the second two like it it only manages to teleport once before the second and third rings hit and they're all just going in perfect synchronicity as they spin down around this uh this um what did i just do uh this this wooden statue uh he looks quite bashful. <laughs> um, from kind of surprised. <laughs> from behind you, you just hear clank, 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 <laughs> clank. I know. Court class too. Yeah, it's banner. <laughs> yes, uh, bravo. Here, here you go. Uh through all three rings gets you two prizes and he hands over a um a it's about two feet across 
stuffed spider oh. <laughs> and a a wooden wand uh, with a tag hanging off the bottom of it that says wand of prestidigitation <gasps> limited use <laughs> uh, I uh, love I that I think I have these as a sheet but continue um uh I mean, I'm probably gonna look at the uh, if if you have a sheet for them, I'll look at the wand, press to wander press to digitation. But I think, um, like <laughs> Hemlock it will kind of like part his coat your... to uh, try to um, like find a pocket or something to put this uh, uh, fucking put this wand. Uh, kind of revealing that there's like there's already two strapped to his belt. Um, and then actually, uh, look around for a, uh, like a small child to give it off to. Uh, there are a number of children around you who are all just cheering, uh, at the end of this play. <laughs> I do uh, not have a sheet for this toy spider. No. Why, why would you do this to me? Roll 20. Sorry, carry on. Uh, is the is the spider like scary? <laughs> no, it it literally looks like a like it is a um, plush spider uh, with you know big glass bead eyes and no fangs. It's got a big old smile face on it. It's got a little name tag that says Groblets. <laughs> Kind of niche reference did Adam just make? Someone tell me, please. It's for, it's for the Wednesday game. There's a D. Very niche. With... Okay. Uh, he's a god, a and he's mean, and has this spider named Groblets. <laughs> he's been mean to us. Yeah. Try to kill us next week. Yeah. It's fine. Um. Uh, oh God, I can't tell you how badly I want to keep this, but I will also give this to. Um, I'm going to like look for like a, like just scanning around for like a clearly like poor child who probably just barely managed to get into the carnival, uh, and and give that to that. This is what I. <laughs> this is what me Max does at arcades and carnivals and shit. <laughs> Those are in your journal. I don't know why I didn't just do this and hit this button and make life easy on myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, there are there are plenty of of people around and uh, plenty of children who are quite happy to receive these prizes and they they give you a little thank you a little squeeze the spider and then run off i made my boy too soft <laughs> <laughs> um upon seeing this uh banner will hand the unicorn horn full of candy to hemlock oh uh, thank you <laughs> Nifty little things, um, just not particularly well equipped to be carrying them, and uh, I, well, I only have need for one wand anyway, and it's capable of small illusions, which I can already produce, so. But it was very kind of you, nonetheless, and uh, after that performance, uh, clearly, uh, you deserve this more than I. He smiles and flashes a few sharp teeth and eats some of the candy. <laughs> well, that was that was fun. Shall we find another? Um, there. I want to see if Candlefoot's back yet. There, there is the sound of uh, both giggling laughter and absolute oh, no. horror <laughs> and crying. As the child to whom you gave the prestidigitation wand to has uh, made his uh, his his siblings' pants look like they were pooped in. 
Wow. Tony, did you take my trick? <laughs> Ted, did you take my trick? <laughs> I, I don't know if that's really your trick. It's just sort of a trick that people do with prestidigitation. That's a and honestly, like if you were six. <laughs> yeah. If yeah, I was heck. six, that's the first thing I'd do. You can't lay claim to that one. That's a that's a good one. <laughs> that's I mean it's a good one, but I know I've done it like a good handful of times. I'm pretty sure with you guys. So like I that mean, was all. A classic, like, schoolyard prank of squirting some water on the front of someone's pants is yeah. an age-old well, thing. Well, yes, uh, yes, but I'm talking specifically the prestidigitation, soil <laughs> versus... Cl- yes, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> Class. Um, Good one. Are, are you just waiting to see if he's back in front of the Hall Illusions, or are you following him behind the Hall? Um, if he's not back in front, I'd like to wander behind. You, you turn around and and Lyril is still there punching tickets. Uh, just the the line for the Hall of Illusions is suddenly extremely short. <laughs> Who knows why? Uh, wandering behind the Hall of Illusions, uh, it you can he stands out because of his sort of uh, monochromatic nature. He is uh, about halfway in the water uh, and Palasha is sort of nestled not really in his lap or anything like that because it, you know, sitting on the riverbank. Uh, and she is singing uh, in the same beautiful tones that you heard uh, at Silver Song Lake and she is holding uh, one of her hands up and there is a ring sparkling on her finger. Wahoo! I applaud. Uh, they, they they turn to look at you, and uh, Candlefoot gives you just the the biggest grin you've ever seen on this poor man's face. Woohoo! Congrats! Arlen does like some little finger guns just in the air, and like press to taste some like little sparklers. Nothing too big or anything, just some like silver and gold little tassels just fly out of his fingers. Oh, wait, I'm not there. Shit. No, no, I assumed yeah. if anyone yeah. wanted to come, like, the court would have, wasn't being secretive. He would have been like, this is where I'm going. Come if you'd like. Then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Candlefoot gets up, and Palasha swims uh, a little bit up the river to be as close to you all as possible. Um. I just I just want to say thank you guys so much. If if you hadn't caught any stares at Kettle Steam, if you hadn't gotten my voice back, this day would have just been the worst. Instead it's the best. This is this is the best thing that's ever happened. I'm oh, glad uh... we could help. I'm glad it worked out. I'll squeeze the Kenku's neck one more time and sort of push him forward. I believe you have uh, one more apology to make. He looks up at you a a little pleadingly, uh, turns to look at Palasha and just kind of bends down like... It it occurs to you that if he's it's possible he's never I guess he heard himself say, No, I'm and and, and in a mimicking uh voice of Candlefoot, I'm I'm really, really sorry. I'm really sorry. It it really is the best singing I've ever heard. Uh in in a mimic of what he said earlier. It's hard to read a mermaid's face, but she does swim over to to Candlefoot and sort of take his hand. And... Right, do you see? Kettle, you have in terms. Don't you feel better now? You have made amends to those you have heard today. Amends. Well, would you like to play some games while we wait? Um, 
Yeah. Where are y'all headed? The air is full of wonderful smells from the various booths. The sun... While this place has always been uh, sort of... Had that sort of twilight look to it, the sun is... Um, full of is is casting beautiful shades of of purples and oranges and reds uh as the clouds sort of break up the various sunset hues the lights on the uh the ropes that connect all the tents are just sparkling and there are just wonderfully warm breezes it is absolutely beautiful everybody that you can see seems to be having a wonderful time Where? Uh, oh, any, good. Anyone see anything interesting? I'm AFK, so. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> uh, there are plenty of other booths. There is There are a number of small stall games like the Al Mirage. You know that there is the uh, Outstare the Cyclops that um, was, was mentioned by Arlen earlier. There is... <laughs> Uh, there is a gnome not so far away uh, sort of barking at uh, the crowd as they walk by, gesturing to a, a very strange-looking creature. Uh, it's almost like a... It looks like a... It almost looks like a chicken, but it has, like, some scaled parts... Uh, and it's standing about two feet tall, and this gnome in a uh, in in a golden overcoat, birds of a feather, how about bird feathers of a bird? Step right up and guess how many feathers festoon this fiendish fowl. Uh, there is you can actually see uh, the cyclops. They're not exactly small creatures. And uh, the other one that would catch your attention. Uh, banner specifically there is a uh it's a it's a fairly sizable pavilion tent but outside it in in kind of an open field part there are four wooden posts each about three feet tall driven into the ground with uh ropes forming sort of like an arena and inside yeah uh, you don't there... have to finish banners headed that way <laughs> <laughs> You walk up oh, as well, there, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> you walk up as uh, there is a a a half orc uh, inside the ring with a pair of goblins trying to uh, pin them to to the ground. the The floor of this arena is pure mud. This is a mess, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it he he looks like he's got one like almost down but it slips out through the mud and just jumps on uh like jumps at him while the, while his buddy has the other goblin has moved around behind this this guy's legs and they topple him to the ground and both lay on his chest and uh the the the, the half orc gets up laughing and and heads out where uh clank 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 yeah, 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 step right up. Step right up, test your metal in a goblin wrestle. One punch. Uh, I will take the crate off my back and uh, place it down, and then literally whoever's around me. Uh, uh, watch this, please. I'll, I'll step watch up. Watch the stuff. <laughs> The, the two goblins stand on one side of the arena. Uh, you only have to pin one of the two goblins mm -hmm. with a strength athletics check. However, they are working in tandem. Okay. So um, they will resist you with advantage. So. 
uh, fair enough. So I'm just rolling athletics checks. Yep. It is. It is slimy work. Uh, this ground has been torn up pretty good. Um, it doesn't really give you great footing and they are actually pretty pretty skilled wrestlers like they 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 know their trade very well it is close like you they they go to do the same trick that they that you just saw them pull against the half orc but you just saw them do it so you know you you know to kind of duck and the one that uh, was was trying to barrel into you, just basically jumps right onto his buddy, uh, who is down where your legs would have been. And if not for that mistake, they they may have gotten you, but you just sort of pin them to the ground. And there is uh, there there is a moment where they struggle to stand back up, but eventually they they tap into the mud. Ah, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you, you two are, are very skilled. It was uh, quite a challenge, but uh, it's uh, very rewarding to have uh, bested uh, you both. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, I will turn to face whatever crowd is watching, and I will grab uh, both of the, their... Uh, I'll grab each of their hands, right? And I will take a bow and I will exit the ring. Uh, you, you, the, the crowd cheers for, for your win over the goblins. Um, they, they point you towards uh, the, the, a, a third goblin who stands there and with a wand similar to the one that you saw uh, Hemlock win a moment ago. Mm -hmm. uh, he cleans all the mud off of you uh, and hands you a what looks like a a it's a wizard and I'm not I didn't make this so mm -hmm. <laughs> it is a glove puppet of a wizard mm -hmm. sort of like a sock puppet and mm -hmm. I will put that in your uh, your turn one second uh, it allows you to cast mage hand uh, three times. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'd love if the cast of Mage Hand looks like this wizard just walking around in the air and lifting things up with his little hands. It better. <laughs> this is another one they didn't put in. Hold on. I gotta make another handout for it. The goblins are looking around. Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, yes, I, I, I do believe so. And I will push Kettlesteam forward. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. You should be able to see that now, Adam. Okay, thanks. Yeah, got it. Uh, there is the sound of a, of a kettle full of water whistling. And Kettlesteam turns around and looks at you and his eyes narrow a bit. He sighs and he crawls into the ring. And these goblins just embarrass him. Like, they they do the thing where, you know, they he comes charging and they duck through his legs. And they turn around and they kick him in the back end and, and send him face first into the mud. And they they play with him for a few minutes before they eventually pin him down. And he looks for a minute like maybe he's going to do something, but he just climbs out of the ring, gets cleaned off and stomps off like five steps. Not not far enough where it's clear mm -hmm. he's trying to run or anything, but just uh, I'll just walk up to him and I'll sort of squat down so I can. I was going to say, well, yeah, I mean, I can look him in the eye, even though I have no eyes or face. Um, and I'll just say, uh, listen, I am 
very sorry. I apologize profusely. It's just I had so much fun in there. I thought you might have some fun as well, but clearly uh, I am mistaken, and uh, I, I will not uh, push you to uh, be involved in uh, any other games unless uh, you want to. Uh, there is the sound of bubbles popping. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he seems mollified. I'll just stand up. I'll start putting my giant crate back on. Uh, where to next? The sun has I mean, moved a bit. You'd estimate you have probably another hour before the big top extravagance. Uh, I could play these carnival games all night, but uh, that seems terribly unfair to the rest of you. What would what, what, what you all like to do? I mean, we might as well stick around in the area. Well, we could go over to the teapot or, you know, play around in the Pixie Kingdom. What, what, are, what are those? Well, the Pixie Kingdom is really tiny. Uh, it's like a little fair inside of a fair. Oh, I heard the snail races are pretty cool. <laughs> oh, it gets it gets heated in there. Mm. <laughs> uh, is 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 it a contest of some sort? Well, yeah, it's a race. Uh, yeah, betting <laughs> banner is not saying anything because he already promised he'd let other people make the decision, but. His movements could best be described as like a six-year-old's I got a pee dance. (laughs) (laughs) Perhaps that might be the next best direction. Well, you know, whatever. Very clearly, like, noticing the (laughs) performance. (laughs) But uh, no, I mean, whatever you all would like to do. But if you want to do this, yes, I would go, of course. We can't let the Frenchman anywhere near these snails. What are you all thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Show this to my folks. It's so good. <laughs> I mean, we're I mean, we're going the snail race. Oh, oh hell my yes. goodness! <laughs> Woohoo! That looks so fun. <laughs> you are you're actually not far from the snail racing arena, and the grandstands next to the race course are filled with cheering fairgoers of all kinds, uh, waving little pennants. Um, and there is a, there is a line of, uh, eight giant snails. Uh, and they, they are currently all being, uh, uh, cleaned up by, by basically pit crews with like long, uh, you know, scrubbing brooms and buckets of, of soapy water. Um, As, as you walk up, there there is a, there's a crier out there. Uh, hit a hit a watch or hit a race. I would like to race. Oh, watch! I think. Do, 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 do what, you what about you, big boy? You looking at you? You man. you you think that I could uh, get on one of these nerves? Oh yeah, 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 it'd be fine. What do you, what do you, what what do you weigh? Like, do, do 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 you weigh less than a giant? Well, uh, yes, I presume that I do. I would very much like to uh, race All a right. snail. Anyone else? Anyone else? Stands? Stand or shell? Stand or shell? We Damn. got. We got. We got. We got a whole lineup for you today. Holy shit. <laughs> Number uh, one in pink, we got Shelly Moo. We got blue is Nimblefoot. Purple, we got High Road. We got Quick Leaf. That's the green. Flower Flash in the yellow. Uh, Wizzy in the orange. Breakneck in red. And Queen's Majesty. Number eight in the black. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take number one. <laughs> Uh, as we're going in, can I go ahead and do my tails from beyond and yeah. roll a die to see what tail I Absolutely. get? Absolutely. Oh my Six. god. Uh, that is the tail of the traveler. 
Do, do, do. I'll just hang on to it. Uh, oh, actually, I'm going to give that to my snail. Yeah, you'll have to. Uh, the target gains temporary hit points equal to a roll of your bardic inspiration die and your bard level. While it has these temporary hit points, the target's walking speed increases by 10 feet, and it gains a plus awesome. one bonus to its AC. It's pretty impressive. Does it, does it have to understand you or anything like that? I don't think it does. No, no. Okay. So they gain eight temporary hit points, and their speed increases by 10, and a bonus to their AC by plus one. I should break these things up into individual things so I can populate them more easily. Maybe actually, like, build a table out of them or something? I don't know. But, yeah. Okay. May, may, I, may I take uh, the yellow snare? Flower flash. Can do. Can do. Wonderful. Uh, and the three pixies that are around each snail uh, help you to climb into the saddle. There are a pair of um, a, a pair of goblins sort of officiating and uh, uh, calling down to everybody to 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 uh, ladies and gentlemen, please prepare yourselves, take your seats. We're going to be starting. We're going to be starting our snail racing any moment. And uh, you, the two of you, climb into your into your uh, saddles, and uh, various members of the the. The crowd uh, fill in for the remaining snails. Okay, so <laughs> the way this is gonna work, there, there, there's no initiative. There's no initiative for this. Uh, everybody will sort of run uh, simultaneously, mm -hmm. left to its own devices. Your snail will move eighty feet. Uh, you will make a hand an animal handling check, uh, and if you are, st depending on your your results, you will either uh, increase or decrease the the rate of speed of your snail. There are a number of signs posted, and your pixie crew fills you in. Um, no jockey nor spectator is supposed to influence the outcome of a race by using magic or by harming another snail. And hey, if you all are, I did was tell a story. Uh, if you <laughs> <laughs> um if you harm one of the snails, you are automatically disqualified. So all right, all right. Carnival goers, snail race enthusiasts of all kinds. We are here in the... What is this? What are we on? Faerun! Snail racing circuit! On your marks! Get set! And there is a loud bang from, uh, from the end of, like, a pop gun type thing. And make me... Animal handling checks. Let's go, my lovely. Ooh. You know what? I'm going to use that inspiration we got at the beginning of the game. <laughs> so, uh, the snails all lurch forward. The two of you... What are, you, what are you on? You all are you all are on five and one. 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 Oh god, I've got to zoom in here. Yeah, I do have these in order because I'm smart. I, it's almost like I set this up right or something. Uh, <laughs> your snails uh, lurch forward. Why can I not su select anything? Oh, because I have them on the wrong layer. You would think. All right. I am going to move this to the token layer, and I am going to assign this one. I know how to do this. Controlled by 
Tyler, save. You should be able to move your uh your your snail. Uh I am not able to grab it. I can see its name. Hmm. I set it to controlled by and it's on the token layer. Okay. Oh dear, I did not send it to the token layer. I sent the background to the token layer. Awesome. Uh, oh no, I'm on the background layer. Why am I on the background layer? Okay. Your snail lurch ahead. Uh, one of the, the, the green snail actually falls behind significantly. I am confused why you can't move this token, Tyler. Because I didn't, I might have given you control of the background. That's probably what I did. I have control of the token. I, I sure reloaded. Did. No, it was my fault. I double clicked the background thinking I had gotten, I did it again. I had assigned you control of the background instead of the token. I have now. control of the token now, though. So. Excellent. And Adam, you should in a second, if I can mm -hmm. just move this to the right layer. There you go. Did I? Yep, I got it. Okay, perfect. Uh, hold on. Oh, look, I won. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I got it. Okay. Um, it's just sort of... For for the fun of it, yeah, each of the line is supposed to be 10 feet. The 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 race itself is um it's a 480 foot race, and the two of you have already managed to go uh, a good hundred feet of those 480. Your snails are booking. Um and I think Tyler, you said Shelly Moose should actually be. Uh, her ground speed is a little faster, right? Because of the uh, thing? 10 to the base walking speed. Okay, so she would have gone 110. Uh, well, they're Sean, the... well, Sean, Arlene, I will catch you, though. Yeah. As you are rounding the first turn, you can hear the the goblins calling out um, the the various rankings. And why did that close? Oops. Oh, it looks like Quickleaf's Quickleaf's falling behind. We got Queen's Majesty trying to move up the outside, pulling up on Breakneck. In the lead is Shelly Moo with Flower Flower Flash coming up behind in second. Flower Flash moving up. And make me animal handling checks. Flower Flash, you are doing so well, sweetheart. Um, Shelly Moo moves another eighty, thanks to the to the to the boost. Uh, while uh, Flower Flash slows down a, a little bit around the corner. Uh, from one of the stands, a head of lettuce uh, plops down in front of... Um, pl plops down in front of w Wizzy? Yeah, Wizzy, the orange one. And Wizzy just stops. Just stops entirely. How many feet have I moved, Ted? Uh, that should have been another 70 feet. And Got it. animal handling checks. Uh... 
Arlen, you you whisper, you continue to tell this story to to Shelly Moo, who who is continuing to truck along. Uh, Banner, sh Flower Flash is starting to fall behind a little bit. She's uh, mm -hmm. slowing down. Oh my God, why do I keep moving the background? I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Moving around the corner, we've got we've got Shelly Moo in first. That that snail is a lightning bolt. Oh, okay. Well, no, it, it looks like we've got a we got a little ooh, that's we're just gonna call that a dance between those two snails. We're just gonna call that a dance between Queen's Majesty and Fire Flash. We're just don't don't look kids. one more set of animal handling checks. Maintaining sort of the same positions from here on out, the 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 lot of you uh, race your snails. There are um, there, there's no chance of a pileup or anything like that. Obviously, uh, at one point, one of the one of the uh, one of the saddles is the word I'm looking for on the uh, on. I rode the purple snail. One of the straps just snaps off, and this poor halfling who is piloting, uh, who who is riding the snail, starts to fall and is uh, very quickly rescued by the pit crew of pixies that have been flying along behind these snails. Uh, Shelly Moo, you are the first to cross, followed by Flower Flash, and uh, the rest of the snails with uh, um, Queen's Majesty coming in. Dead last. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there we have your whatever whatever year it is here in Faron snail racing circuit complete. Hope everybody had a good time. Uh, whoever threw that cabbage, yeah, no, okay, the witch light, the hands already got him. Cool. You suck for ruining the prize, uh, for, for for ruining the good time here. But uh, I hope everybody else had a good time. Here is your winner. Is that is that Arlen? That that's uh, hey Arlen, how's it going? <laughs> Keep it down. I don't want everyone to know that I work here. They might like think I like cheated or something. Oh, I mean, you definitely. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. No, it's this is yeah. Congratulations, Arlen. Here you go. And uh, one of the. Um, pit crew for Shelly Moo, uh, one of the the pixie pit crews hands you a uh, a small glass vial stoppered with a, um, uh, a a unicorn's head and the liquid inside is a swirl of blue and gold and this is a potion of advantage Ooh. and I swear to god if this is not in the treasure list I'm going to lose my mind Oh, it's probably <laughs> under P, idiot. <laughs> I'm looking under A, sorry. <laughs> uh, that is already in all players' journals, but I'm specifically adding it to yours. Arlen, you, you, you did so wonderful. You uh, had no idea you were such an accomplished uh, snail racer. And I had absolutely no idea you could speak snail. What 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 were you telling uh, uh, Shelly Moo? You know, actually, it's not so much about like them understanding the words. It's it's more about you know the emotion and the like the feel of the words. You know. Mm. Uh, so as long as uh, the passion is communicated, the actual uh, text is not quite as important. Right, you know, that's why, you know, uh, most uh, writers talk to their mouths, you know? It's just a, a mm. soothing voice, that kind of thing. I see. This is something that I will have to practice. Also, uh, the story I was telling was about the, the little snail who could, uh, uh, just, uh, you know, well, thought uh, it was fun when you have the time and the inclination i would uh, very much like to hear that story 
Okay. I'll warn you. The snail dies. Eventually, you know, at the end. What? Yeah. I believe he said that at the end of the story, the uh, snail dies. But uh, I didn't tell no... that part to Shelley Moo, though. Oh. Uh, that is probably for the best. I don't know that. Uh... Oh, well, maybe she would have been even faster. <laughs> Who knows? Perhaps uh, we will try again at another time. But uh, no, that uh, does not bother me. There are many good stories that uh, involve someone dying. Um, Most of mine do. Oddly enough. Hmm. I mean, perhaps the, perhaps the story is mistitled uh, because apparently the, that little snail that could, uh, could not. Oh, ah, oh, yeah. That was sort of the uh, same thought that I had had just uh, as, as far as confusing messages. Hmm. Oh, well, maybe... When they refer well, to the little snail that could, it is about the little they are talking about dying. So if, if they're talking about dying, then it is the little <laughs> snail that could because it died. It's well, it's a story about like, like doing what you can while you're around. You know, making an mm. impact that lasts even though mm. life is not permanent. You know what I mean? Yes, life is fleeting. Should we go to the big top? Uh, I have to meet up with Mr. Witch. Don't we all? Is that not yeah. the intention? Well, I is usually is floating around somewhere else, but yeah. I believe uh, uh, Nick said that uh, Mr. Light would be at the big top, but uh, Mr. Witch was nowhere to be found. Is it big top time? Sorry, I was typing something up. Um, the snail racing took uh, between waiting for the pit crew and all of that. You've probably got about 20, 30 minutes. So it's not quite time, but it wouldn't be. We'll start heading over. Do uh. Do any of you need something to eat before we uh, hit the big top? I mean, honestly, I'm always ready to go to Chowtown. Uh, well, looking at his map, I, where, where is Chowtown? <laughs> it's, it's an expression, my man. Ah. Uh, Well, let, uh, let us find some place to get you some food before mm, we go in the big... Is food allowed in the big top? Oh, yeah. Boy, is it. Emlock, kettle steam, something to eat? I lift the corn of candy. <laughs> ah... Cold? Uh, I'm not good, thank you. Arlen, are you heading to Small Stall, or you know where the Feasting Orchard is? Uh, let's, uh, let's check out the Feasting Orchard. We let's... already stopped by Small Stall, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I just realized that uh, I sent something that's not even going to be read. Uh, Hemlock, as you all are standing there, um, you get a sort of a... You, you get the sensation of being watched as you are having this conversation. And there is, in fact, a, uh, a, a human in a long coat... Uh, no hat, but he's got a, a a mess of sort of curly brown hair, and he's just staring at you from across the aisleway towards Pixie Kingdom. Sorry, describe the chat. Describe him again. <laughs> a a tall human in a long coat, uh, 
fairly nondescript clothing other than the fact that he's got a long coat on in what is otherwise pleasant weather. Uh, his hair is dark brown, short and curly, um, like a, you know, curly lump of hair. And he's just sort of staring at you uh, from across the way. Um, I adjust my lens and cast detect magic. I don't know how far away he is, but if he's within 30 feet. He is farther than 30 feet away. Um, the, the aisle way, the, basically the main like drag between uh, the, the inner and outer circles of the, the carnival is fairly sizable since the, the crowds are, um, are, are, are fairly large throughout the entire carnival. But um, you, you do get that of, of course the, the area here is entirely magical, but he is a little bit outside of your uh, reach with the spell. Uh, I will just quickly cast a message towards him and say, is there something I can do for you? You can return what you've stolen. I turn and start moving very, very, very quickly after everyone else. <laughs> he does not ever move towards you. Uh, like, he doesn't ever attempt to cross the, the, the main walkway. Uh, mm -hmm. But he does try to keep pace with you uh, and as as you all are making your way to Feasting Orchard, uh, he sort of stays at that 40-ish, 50-ish foot distance that, that he's sort of keeping. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> um, as we're, like, crossing, um, I will say to Arlen, I don't mean to be alarming uh though this is going to be alarming um yeah I... consider me alarmed uh yes um uh i am being uh followed uh please do not acknowledge that i am being followed i suppose um apparently uh but it should be known uh, and he'll he'll say like a, a like a little bit louder so that the others can hear that <laughs> <laughs> We've got a, a tail, and not just those of us who are supposed to have one. Yeah, Hemlock's mm -hmm. tail flicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this person is not being uh, very subtle at all. <laughs> I am. I am confused. You don't want us to acknowledge that you are being tailed? Well, maybe being just. Not make it necessarily apparent that you maybe know that he is following us. Uh, just understand, I feel it is best that you all know that that is indeed what is happening. Hey, buddy, what's the fucking problem? Oh, dear God. <laughs> he does not acknowledge that you have said anything to him. <laughs> well... Not he's sort of walking things. parallel to you guys, so like you're you're going up. Um, uh, kind of where your tokens are. Like you're you're no, nope, I mean, can switch to the arrow. You know, you're going up the the main drag here, uh, and he's just on this side doing the same thing. And and. You would prefer that we do nothing about this person that is following you? Uh, well, um, he is after something that I have taken. Um, for everyone's safety, I have removed it from where I have found it. It has nothing to do with the carnival, I believe. It was not taken from the carnival, uh, but he... I think you would like me to return it. But you have taken it to keep people safe, yes? I, yes, 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 I have, yes. 
Does oh, his I, will first... ex- I will explain this to him and... Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. No? Uh, uh, um... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Does this person have the wings of someone who has bought a ticket and is allowed to be in this carnival? They appear to be tucked under one arm, but yes. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> As you are walking past the the uh, organ that you saw earlier, Banner, the, the Calliope uh, mm-hmm. organ, uh, the monkey that you saw before, who is turning the uh, the the handle to to this uh, organ wagon, mm-hmm. um, uh, he 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 claps his hands. He stops spinning for a second, claps his hands, and points at you. And a a small goblin dressed as a ladybug topples mm-hmm. up to you, uh, rattling a tin cup, and says in a a kind of sing song for especially for a goblin mm-hmm. uh spare button if if you please i'll sew it next to all of these i offer nothing in its place besides a smile upon my face oh my god that's so cute <laughs> um banner will reach down to his coat and he'll turn his head towards the monkey and he'll say I uh monkey does a little dance I I know of your work it is uh hard work to be at the end of the chain but it is rewarding and I will pull a button off of my coat and put it in the goblin's cup the goblin smiles does a little jig hops around and goes to each of you um, I will take a button off of my vest or my waistcoat, uh, and uh, palm a gold in with it as well. Uh, this goblin's eyes light up. Looks like it's deciding on something and very, very evidently decides not to run over and hug you. <laughs> <laughs> Arlen will reach in a pocket of his coat and like pull off one of the like spare buttons that came with the coat and give it away. And I don't have any buttons. Uh, does Banner? It... Banner will pull off a button from his coat and hand it to court. <laughs> oh. You you have a button, court. <laughs> well, I'll hand off the button. Would have been so funny if you pocketed it. <laughs> it would have been great. Like, oh, sweet, a button. Awesome. <laughs> this guy's got them. They must be worth something. Right. Ne- never thought about keeping them before, but now that this guy's looking for them, all of a sudden, uh, this this little goblin in a ladybug costume smiles at you all and continues around the crowd. Um, and various people put in buttons, and some some don't. And uh, as as you all are walking, you uh, out of basically the, the you the the corner of your vi- the edge of your field of vision. The uh, the goblin in the ladybug suit goes up to the person who was following you and uh, does the same little dance and holds up the cup, says, says the same little uh, poem, and he just shoves the, the, the goblin aside. Uh, I turn around and start walking towards that dude. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, no, no. And I'm going to follow. <laughs> uh, there, there are a number of hands who uh, have... The moment th- that um, didn't say their name, but their their name is Marigold, the goblin, uh, <laughs> is pushed to the ground. <laughs> there are a couple of hands that that sort of try to intercept this guy, but they are coming up from the opposite side uh, from where you're coming. 
and he just sort of dead stops when he sees you walking at him. Hello, friend. Don't know you. I, I believe you need to apologize to our friend collecting buttons. There is the the this the sound of uh teeth grinding uh and he just sort of stares at you. Um I take off the leather disc that has the sort of wide kind eyes and I put on a leather disc that has <laughs> squinty eyes. I said I believe you need to apologize to uh the goblin collecting <laughs> buttons. She's just doing her job. Oh, I'm sorry, little goblin. I'm sorry you got in my way. I didn't mean to knock you to the ground. Isn't it just the worst when people do things they're not supposed to do? I'm so very sorry. Now give her a button. <laughs> He he looks down at his coat, which is um, it's not a button coat. It's like the the little knots and mm -hmm. uh, loops. Tears off a knot, drops it in there. It would be a shame if people didn't get the things they were after. And he's staring at Hemlock, obviously, while he says all of this. Hemlock is visibly sweating. <laughs> yeah, seeing that we I. Switch back to my other leather disc. Yeah, see, now we are friends again. It, uh, being an entertainer is hard work. It uh, must have uh, respect for them. Uh, thank you very much uh, for apologizing. I knew that um, could not possibly have been intentional. Um, I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your time here at the carnival. kind of does that sucking noise through his teeth thing that yeah. Banner's just standing there making no indication that he's going to move this guy seems content to just stand here as well oh, I think that's enough yes uh, and I'm going to go put a hand on Banner's shoulder, uh, and like very gently urge him in in another direction. Ah, uh, yes, I I am sorry. I have forgotten. My friends uh, would like to get some food. Uh, would you like to join us? He says nothing <laughs> and just stares. Very well, sit yourself. I understand the food here is quite wonderful. And I'll. Turn around. Head out. Yep. He does not follow you uh, at, after this point. He he does turn around. You are not far from the entrance, and uh, he just leaves. You see him going to leave the carnival. Uh, oh, dear. One last thing. Um... As you get to the feasting orchard, uh, a large area set aside, there is a um, a, a, a stage set on top of what looks like a giant keg, uh, from which there is a there is a small group of musicians, two or three of them, um, playing. Uh, some very, some very, very upbeat, just happy music. There are people walking by on the, the tall stilt legs, and, um. What really catches your eye is at the back. There is a large, very long, probably forty or fifty foot long table, covered in pies. And there is a, um, a a, a small halfling woman, long uh, apron on. Uh, standing on top of uh, a, a stool, 
calling out, uh, "Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, the 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 fairy cake eating contest will begin shortly. If anyone would like to participate, this is a free event. There are no tickets required. You can just take a seat here at the table, and we will begin the contest." I I don't think I have an appetite. I I do like a good contest, but uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm no, hopefully I'm performing soon. I'm not gonna. Nope. Oh, you're performing soon. Hopefully. I'm very excited. Very much like to see you perform. What what exactly do you do? Uh, hopefully something. Ah, you want to keep the uh, mystery about it, I understand. Sure, I just don't want to get my hopes up. As you watch a, a large group of contestants begin shoveling these um, cupcakes, basically, with uh, large amounts of custard on them into their mouths, it is, it's kind of gross to watch. If we're being honest with each other, it's kind of gross, the amount of cupcakes that are being devoured. Uh, but eventually, the the victor emerges, a a gnome, actually. Uh, a gnomish woman in uh, sort of a purple and brown set of um, like a, a light jacket, and she has a a white uh, the size of a cat, but it's a lizard, like an albino lizard, resting on her shoulder. And she waves to the crowd, waves to everybody. The sun has fully set. It is nearing twilight and almost time for the big top extravaganza. Uh, Court, you know at this point that you should be making your way to uh, the, the dressing area for your, uh, hopefully, your performance and your meeting, Mr. Witch. And that, uh, if we don't mind sort of a shortened session, we can go ahead and stop here. Yeah. Yeah. Won't have to uh, bring up cheddar whales or anything anymore, and we can just... <laughs> <laughs> nope, not search with Google. I wanted to copy. All right, you got a cheddar whale stuck in your throat? Mm -hmm.